Okay, so I was on this journey. <laughs> Um, I was looking at some oracle cards and I was looking at these cards um, the divine feminine oracle um, deck and guidebook for embodying love so I was looking at this oracle they not my cup of tea it's not something I really like, but a lot of these women are like saints, priests, or whatever you call it, and they called it Divine Feminine. So anyways, I was just reading the reviews. I love reading reviews. I be laughing my ass off. Like there's one person here. Let me read this review real quick. <laughs> Although the pictures are lovely, this is not, in my opinion, a true oracle. This is a deck to provoke your interest in these women. There are no guys, just short histories of these women. I could just sit and think on one of these women and what they might mean to me or research one of them. This is in no way worth the money. I own many decks and this is by far is the worst. If it is meant to be an oracle, which I don't think this person know what an oracle is. She just could have written a book with, oh, which would have been more interesting. These are, there are many other decks. Okay, I'm tired of reading this, but she ended it saying, my review is completely my opinion based on my 58 years as a pagan. <laughs> of course you're going to be provoked by this. So I was just scrolling down and I came across this one review with some um, pictures attached to it and I clicked on it. And if I botch up these names, I'm sorry but it is what it is so i came across perpetua perpetua something like that is p-e-r-p-e-t-u-a and the saint of authenticity i am my authentic self in all circumstances that's what the card say and i love authenticity that's why i also like my aunt Lilith and hmm Yamaya. All of these energies are really like the same vibration, just in different containers. So anyways, it made me want to look up Perpetuya to like her story and all of that so i was reading her story i came across this is the catholic.org okay so this is controlled by the catholic church and they had a this is the story of her and i'm gonna read it to y'all <laughs> Perpetuia and Felicity, I don't know, everywhere I look, she is tied together with Felicity. So, Perpetuia and Felicity were Christian martyrs who lived during the early prosecu prosecution of church in Africa by the Emperor Severus. So, when I see Severus, I think of Severe. <laughs> With details concerning the lives of many early martyrs, unclear and often based on legend, we are fortunate to have the actual record of the courage of Perpetuia and Felicity from the hand of Perpetuia herself. 
her teacher, Satyrus, that got my attention because it made me think of Saturn. And I have a lot of Saturn in my chart, a lot of Capricorn and Aquarius. So, um, her teacher, Satyrus, and others who knew them. This account known as the Passion of Saint Perpetuia, Saint Felicitas, and their companions was so popular in the early centuries that it was read during uh, liturgies, liturgies, whatever. Okay, in the year 203, Perpetuia, a well-educated noble woman, <laughs> oh my goodness anyways um i was checking if i still recording made a decision to follow the path of her mother and become a christian although she knew it would mean her death during the prosecu prosecutions order by the emperor severus her surviving brother another brother had died when he was seven followed her leadership and became a a tacumen a tacumen or something like that as well meaning the meaning he would receive instruction from the catalyst in the Catholic Christian faith and he prepared for baptism. Okay. So that's the part I'm getting to the part that was I left I left off at and decided to record because it was funny to me. <laughs> Alright, so her pagan father was frantic with worry and tried to talk her out of her decision. At 22 years old, <laughs> the well-educated, high-spirited woman had every reason to want to live, mm. including a baby son whom she was still nursing. We know she was married, but since her husband is never mentioned, Many historians assume she was already a widow. No, she had a baby out of wedlock. Point blank, period. Okay. Which ain't shit wrong with that, but you know how these Catholics, and you know, since she's Saint Perpetuia, what I'm actually feeling is the fact that they know that she had a baby out of wedlock, but they just erase her her um baby daddy period because she wasn't married to them and then came up with this narrative you know to fit the image of a virgin virgin mary anyways perpetuia's answer was simple and clear <laughs> get this y'all get this get this <laughs> point in Pointing to a water jug, she asked her father, see that pot laying there? Can you call it by any other name than what it is? Her father answered, of course not. Perpetuia responded, neither can I call myself by any other name than what I am, a Christian. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about how this is a whole mental cage that you don't want to get into. First of all, why can't you call that water jug any other name? Hmm? Why can't you? Because we have all types of water containers. You get what I'm saying? That we call different names. So first of all, I would have thought that was a dumbass question. Yeah, you could call that part another name if you choose to. That's how you manifest things. Things are what you believe they are. Like, what the fuck? 
So the dad was like, of course not, which I don't even feel like a pagan saying, of course not. I don't believe that. I don't believe that right there. I don't believe that at all. And then she's going to respond, neither can I. Okay. <laughs> neither can I call myself by any other name than what I am a Christian. Well, you call your name by the, you call yourself Perpetuia, first of all. And that was a choice that you made. So yes, you can. Like you see how she completely relinquished her power to be able to call herself a Christian. You see that? It even sounds like she putting herself into a cage, a box. Cause she don't feel like she could be anything but that. Like, it sounds like she giving her life away. You know what I'm saying? All right. So the rest of this I haven't read yet. So we're going to read this together. My mouth is dry. All right. The answer upset her father and he attacked her. <laughs> For what? Perpetuia reports that after that incident, she was glad to be separated from him for a few days, even though that separation was the result of her arrest and imprisonment. Mm. Mm -hmm. It sure motherfucking was. She imprisoned herself when she called herself a Christian. Let me read this phrase one more time. Neither can I call myself by any other name than what I am a Christian. You, Do you feel the limitation in that? How she limited herself. So, Perpetuia was arrested with four other Katamans, Katic humans, I don't know y'all including two slaves Felicity <laughs> and Revocatus and Saturnus Saturn oh my goodness these names um, and Saturnus and Secondulus Secondulus their instructor in the faith Satyrus choose to share their punishment and was also in prison. <laughs> oh my goodness. Like that feels like the feeling of that. So, Perpetuia was baptized before taken to prison. Ooh. Mm -mm -mm. She has known, she was known for her gift of the Lord's speech. <laughs> oh my goodness. And receiving messages from God. Mm. She tell us that at the time of her baptism, she was told to pray for nothing but endurance in the face of her trials. Damn. She tell us that at the time of her baptism, she was told to pray for nothing but endurance in the face of her trials. That don't sound sad to people. <laughs> and the reason why she's in prison and in trials is because of her decision. She wanted to imprison herself by choosing to be a Christian. Like I'm not, I'm not 
like trying to tear down Christian people or nothing like that. You know, I feel like there's different types of Christian, right? I know people who like, they believe in like the Bible, the narrative of it, or they feel comfortable believing in that. But they are also open to other concepts and ideals. It's like they infuse their individuality into it. But it's different when you imprison yourself into a religion. Because the karma that she paying, the trials and tribulations that she is going through, is all in the name of her religion. And she is willing to sign up for this imprisonment for heaven, <laughs> for somebody else's ideal of heaven. Because when she died, she going to go to their heaven and be imprisoned into that. You get what I'm saying? Initially initially and she couldn't even manifest for herself because she told to only pray for endurance for the trials that she was going to come into endurance so she didn't work on manifesting anything else but these damn trials she manifests the trials that she had to endurance. You get what I'm saying? Damn, bro. The prison was so crowded. Let me make sure I'm still recording. Okay. The prison was so crowded with people that the heat was suffocating. <laughs> there was no light anywhere. And Perpetuia had never known such darkness. The soldiers who arrested and guarded them pushed and shoved them without any concern. Perpetuia had no trouble admitting she was very afraid, but during all this horror, horror her most excruciating pain came from being separated from her baby. Mm. The young slave Felicity was even worse off, for Felicity suffered the stifling heat, overcrowding and rough handling while being eight months pregnant. Mm -hmm. Two deacons who ministered to the prisoners paid the guards to place the martyrs in a better part of the prison. There, her mother and brother were able to visit Perpetuia and bring her baby to her. So the deacons paid a guard so they could be in a better part of the prison. But shit, they still in motherfucking prison. And look, they're going to be thankful just for being in a better part of the prison, even though they still in prison. When she received permission for her baby to stay with her, she recalled, my prison suddenly became a palace for me. Oh, bitch. Ain't this shit sad? This is a sad ass story. Once her father came to her, begging her to give in, like, bitch, get out of prison kissing her hands and throwing himself at her feet. 
she told him some dumb shit. I already know. <laughs> she told him, well, lay not in our own power, but in the power of God, bitch. Wow. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. When she and the others were taken to be examined and sentenced, her father followed, pleading with her and the judge. The judge, out of pity, also tried to get Perpetua to change her mind. <laughs> but when she stood fast, she was sentenced with the others to be thrown to the wild beasts in the arena. OMG. Perpetua recanted how her brother spoke to her. Lady sister, you are now greatly honored so greatly that you may well pray for a vision to show you whether suffering or release is in store for you. Hold on. Lady sister, you are now greatly honored, so greatly that you may, may well pray. See, somebody else now telling her what she could pray for now. Why? Because she ain't thinking for herself. She can't pray for the things that she wants. Somebody's always telling her what to pray for. You know, what to manifest. She's sounding possessed, okay? To show you whether suffering or release is in store for you. Perpetua, who spoke to the Lord often, told her brother she would tell him what happened the next day. While she prayed, Perpetuia was shown a golden ladder at the highest length, reaching up to the heaven. I wonder if this is going to end with her somehow getting out of prison. And she gonna do she gonna feel like it's the work of God or something. Let's see. Or she gonna die and go to their heaven. Let's see now. Maybe there's a be a plot twist. Ooh, getting juicy. Dun dun dun. So Perpetuia was shown a golden ladder of the highest length, reaching up to the heaven. On the sides of the ladder were swords, lances, hooks, and daggers, so that if anyone did not climb looking up on heaven, they would be severely injured. So, bitch, they didn't even have no motherfucking choice. Damn, bitch. Mm. At the bottom of the ladder, bitch. At the bottom of the ladder laid a large dragon. Oh, hell no. So they had no choice but to go to their heaven. <laughs> At the bottom of the ladder laid a large dragon to try to scare those journaling, journaling up away from heaven. So they was forced. Bitch, they was forced. Perpetuia first saw Satyrus go up. After he reached the top of the ladder, he said, Perpetuia, I'll wait for you, but take care. That dragon does not bite you. To which she replied, In the name of Jesus Christ, he will not hurt me. And the dragon put his head down. <laughs> Perpetuia travel up the ladder in a ways. So she went up there in a ways, even though she didn't even fear the dragon anymore. So what was the point of calling on Jesus in the first place? I mean, God damn, like, God damn, like, what the hell? Okay.
purple Tuya travel up the ladder and saw a beautiful vast garden with a tall man with white hair dressed like a shepherd and milking sheep. Let me think of that visual real quick. Thou art will come, my child, he said to Purple Tuya, giving her some of the crusts from the milk. She ate and all those around her said, Amen. <laughs> Wait a minute. Thou art will come, my child. What that mean? So you will come? You will come with me? And if you come with me, I'm going to give you these milk, cur these milk curds. All right. Perpetuia woke from her dream with a sweet taste still in her mouth. Childhood. At once, she was possessed, y'all. Something took over her spirit, making her have these really intense dreams. So she could walk their path instead of her own. At once, she told her brother what happened. And together, they understood they must suffer. Oh, hell, motherfucking zombie. Ain't that some shit right there? Oh, my goodness. See? Sending you straight to hell, straight to hell, straight to hell, straight to hell. At once she told her brother what happened, and together they understood they must suffer. Wow, bitch. Meanwhile, Felicity was also in torment. It was against the law for pregnant women to be executed. To kill a child in the womb was shedding innocent and sacred blood. Felicity was afraid that she would not give birth before the day set for the martyrdom, martyrdom. And her companions would go on their journey without her. Her friends also didn't want to leave so so good a comrade behind. I kind of zoned out on that part, y'all. Hold on. Something was pulling on my energy real hard. Oh, ooh, child. I feel like somebody is thinking about having sex with me. So... Felicity was afraid that she would not give birth before the martyrdom, um, shedding her blood for some dumb shit. And her companions will go on their journey without her. So she said that she ain't gonna be killed with her friends. Y'all see how did y'all see this? Her friends also didn't want to leave, so good a comrade. I don't know what that means behind. Two days before the execution, Felicity went into a painful labor. Oh, so was she going to rejoice because she going to have this baby before getting killed with her friends? The guards made fun of her, insulting her by saying, if you think you suffer now, how will, how will stand it when you face the wild beast? Felicity answered then them calmly. Now, I'm the one who is suffering, but in the arena, another will be in me suffering for me because I will be suffering for him. See, told y'all, she possessed. See that? Y'all see that? Let me, let me read it again. Two days, no, nah, I ain't gonna go that far back. If you think you suffer now, how will you stand when you face the wild beast? Felicity answered them calmly. 
now I'm the one who is suffering. So she's saying right then and right then and there, she's the one suffering. But in the arena, when she get into that lion's den that they're going to throw her in because she chose to call herself a Christian, another will be in me suffering me because I will be suffering for him. She's saying that she will be suffering for their idealism, their religion, their light, sacrificing themselves for that. They sacrificing themselves for that. Y'all get what I'm saying? Mm. Now that is some shit right there. That is crazy, y'all. Y'all don't be reading this shit. They be teaching this shit in the Catholic Church. People be reading this in the Catholic Church. And y'all don't be like, dang, that's crazy. Dang, that's... I don't know, child. I don't know. She gave birth to a healthy girl who she adopted and raised by one of the Christian women of Cart Cartledge. Wow, bitch. I don't know how to pronounce this name, but it reminds me of Cartledge. So her baby girl is gonna be raised by one of the Christian women of Cartledge. Damn, that's crazy. It's like saying Christian women are blood to me. That's what it made me think of. Blood and guts. Sacrifice. The officers of the prison began to recognize the power of the Christians. Childhood. And the strength and leadership of Perpetuia. In some cases, this helped the Christians. The warden let them have visitors. And later became a believer. But in other cases, it caused superstitious terror, as when one officer refused to let them get cleaned up on the day they were going to die for fear they tried some sort of spell. <laughs> oh, bitch. I don't care what spell they did, because if they, if they didn't do a spell to get out of prison, then I don't care. I don't give a two damn. What are they going to cast a spell on? Child, okay. Perpetuia immediately spoke up. We're supposed to die in honor of Caesar's birthday. Caesar's? What the hell? Wouldn't it look better for you if we looked better? Oh, okay. So they doing reverse psychology on the guards so they could go take a shower to die. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right. The officer blushed with shame at her approach, at her reproach, and started to treat them better. Child. See? Oh my God. Child, I just can't. There was a feast the day before the games so that the crowd could see the martyrs Oh, okay, so this was a, a celebration, a ritual, all right, and make fun of them. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, y'all, I'm about to say as they should, because I'll probably be looking at them like, this is stupid, y'all, this, this, this ain't smart, you know, this, I'm, I mean... There's no better way. You have to die for this. Like, I mean, I don't know. 
it just sounds crazy to me. So, um, but the martyrs turn this all around by laughing at the crowd <laughs> for not being Christians. And exhorting them to follow their example. Mm -mm -mm. The four new Christians and their teacher went to the arena. The fifth, Seculus, had died in prison. So one of them didn't get to die with them here because he died in prison. With joy and calm. Perpetuia and usual high spirits met the eyes of everyone along the way. Y'all know what this man of the Hunger Games. We are told she walked with shining steps as the true wife of Christ, the darling of God. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Shining steps as the true wife of Christ? The darling of God? I mean, damn, that's, that's, that's crazy. The wife and the darling of God. Mm. When those at the arena tried to force Perpetuia and the rest to dress in robes dedicated to their gods, Perpetuia challenged her executioners. We came to die out of our own free will. Mm. Let me tune in a little bit more for this right here. Just a little bit more. All right, where I'm at. We came to die out of our own free will. So we wouldn't lose our freedom to worship our God. I don't know about y'all, but that sounds to me that she's giving away her free will to be a slave to God. That's what it sounds like to me. All right, so I took a quick break. Let's get back into this. Okay, we gave you our lives so that we wouldn't have to worship your gods. She and the other keep their clothes. The men were attacked by bears, leopards, and wild boars. Ugh, damn. The women were stripped to face a rabid heifer. The two were thrown out and attacked. But the crowd cried out they had had enough. The women were removed and clothed again. Perpetuia and Felicity were thrown back into the arena to face the gladiators. Perpetuia called out to her brother and other Christians, stand fast in the faith and love one another. Do not let our sufferings be a stumbling block to you. Stand fast in the faith and love one another amongst the Christians. Do not let our sufferings be a stumbling block to you. So, even though you're about to see us die brutally, 
um, don't let that keep you from walking down our path to a place where we are, you know, giving our light away to this ancient source that, you know, they don't really know nothing about and yada yada yada. So, anyways. Perpetuia and Felicity stood side by side and were killed by sword at cartilage. Uh, interesting. Because the baby, Felicity baby, was given to a Christian woman of cartilage in the Roman province of Africa. Oh, hell no. So, Perpetuia and Felicity are the patron saints of mothers, expected mothers, ranchers and butchers. Ranchers and butchers? Damn, babe. Why? Because they was stumped to death by cattle? Are you know butchered to death by gladiators? I mean, damn, the disrespect. Their feast day is celebrated on March 7. What? That's the day that they died? That's crazy to me. Okay, so they gotta end their footsteps. Purple to you said. That she couldn't call herself any other name but Christian. Write down a list of names and destinations that people could call you. Is Christian high on that list? How can you make how can you help make your name as Christian be more important? <laughs> Damn. The mind control, the programming that's going on right now. That shit just don't work on me. But the people that it do work on, pull things. Pull things. You just read this horror story. And they trying to tell you that Perpetuia and Felicity did the right thing. And then they want you to follow in their footsteps. This is like... Like a... a what you call it? A bad gimmick, a bad scheme or something. Uh like getting a bad deal on a sale on a sale or something. You're not bargaining well. Look, I can't even I can't even I can't even right now. So Live today as if that was the only name you could be called by. And then they have a prayer down here that I'm not for to read. And then they sell jewelry with their names on it. Wow. Oh boy. I don't know about y'all, but I ain't about that life. I ain't about that life. Not that one. All right. Stay blessed, y'all.